Welcome to the Popcorn Junkies. Hooray, hello. This is a review of Long Legs. Now, this is a big deal. Oh my God, man, sorry, you look what? so strange. You look psychotic, <laughs> man. Look, don't start laughing. Oh, you look a bit like, like it. It just doesn't look like you. I just do, that. actually. Mom, you do right now, you really... You look like Long Legs. Well, then you need a wig. Oh, does it look Mom. like you? Wait, what's going on with your eyes? Mum, you're worrying us all. Oh, I think it's just the shadow. Is it the shadow? It's just the shadow. Alright, yeah. just look cross. What can I do with my face to Just pull your cheeks down. Just don't look so scared. Pull and your stressing. cheeks down, pull your eyebrow up. Ah! Welcome to this review of Long Legs. If you're listening on podcast, you won't have got any of that visual nonsense then, because it was all around my mother's face. <laughs> okay, Long Legs. This is a wow. This is curious. This was. This has been. Actually, I'm going to throw this to Maddie. This has. This is a film that's had an awful lot of social media activity prior to it. Like most of the time, films have their own like Instagram account, but I've been yeah. following the Long Legs Instagram account and Neon's Instagram account, and the way that they've oh. advertised this yeah. film is like actual top tier. It really is. They, they've done what they've done, and I haven't seen all of it, and we've reacted to a couple of trailers, a one-minute clip. Less trailers, more clips. They've done a real kind of drip-drip effect, and they've really yeah. held back on the <laughs> horror of it. stars Nick Cage, serial killer. We've got Micah Monroe in there. So you've got a real sense that this is, you know, thrillery, potentially gory, violent, horror-y. But it's been, I think it's been very successful, because it, it, it's just created a real kind of buzz yeah, around it. Probably most notable for the fact that it stars Nicolas Cage. You wouldn't know though. No, you wouldn't know. It stars Micah Monroe, who we know from... It brilliant. Follows. It Follows, which is brilliant. But also I looked up the other film that I remember seeing her in at the Sundance, and it's a really good film. You'll both like it. It's called Watchers. Yeah, it's directed by Osgood Perkins. Now, the reason Osgood Perkins is really interesting is he's the son of Anthony Perkins, who was the star of Psycho. He's a he's a reliable pair of hands. He, he's, he's in the horror zone. His dad was Psycho. So what more do you want? But this is basically a serial killer film, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Or is it? Or is it? And of course, I'm a, we're huge Nick Cage fans, aren't we? Yeah, all of yeah, us. Especially you. Especially me. I'm slightly concerned about that. And I've liked a lot of the films that he's made recently. He's a producer on this too. So like Mandy, uh, The Colour of... Colour Out of Space. Colour Out of Space. The Pig. Uh, yeah. Dream Scenario. You know, he's done... The one with Pedro Pe Oh, of course, yeah. The unbearable likeness unbearable. of being me. Yeah. You know, so he's made some really interesting... So I went into this thinking, yeah! Everything about this, what not to like? How are you feeling as you sat down, Mum? Yeah, I thought it was going to be good. Did you? Yeah. Just <laughs> good to guarantee. I just, I've only ever seen one Nick Cage film that wasn't. But, but for no he's reason. He's almost always a somewhat promising watch. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You never know what you you're going to get. You never something know what he's going to do from scene to scene exactly. So exactly. in that respect, I thought the title was silly. Long Did you? legs? Yeah. Oh. I thought the title was the weakest thing about it, actually. Right. Why? Well, because it doesn't mean anything. He didn't have long legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you've you made legs. your point and it was correct. Okay. Last night, do what you remember? Point, what no, long no, legs I know, means? No, I know what it means. It gets going down to hell, but there's a better way of saying it than that, I'm sure. But I think that's quite long evocative. Legs. I think my long legs had that like child uh, yes. eeriness Eeriness. about it because he says it to the children. And yeah. as a kid, like if you're a kid and there's a man called Long Legs, I've long got legs. my long legs on tonight. Is the first thing he yeah. says to her, isn't it? I thought well, as soon as it started, I was, so I was incredibly gripped. Yeah, yeah, I thought I the was. music choices were great. It was kind of I don't know what it was. It was kind of grungy. We had a quote from T Rex, the band, which I thought was nice. Uh, and we were shooting in four by five, which I always love that kind of, you know, almost Instagram feed square uh, aspect ratio, which is lovely. And then we, which also lends itself to Polaroid photos and yeah. the, sort of period piece and all that. It was that. a very good opening to a film. It was like straight away had you hooked, like it was yes. freaky AF from yeah. the get go. Like he was weird. Yeah, so, and, um, so this goes... and I really liked as well, cause like the whole lead up to this film was like, nobody's been shown obviously Nick Cage's face. We've all known that he's gonna have like weird prosthetics on his face in this film that he looks really odd, but there has been no, like everybody's been really good at keeping the, yeah. um, mm. cause obviously it's been released in America already. Like everybody's been really good at keeping it. Secret. Secret, which I really like cause nothing's mm. kept secret anymore. Um, and it was just really cool because at the start of the film, like we just about see his face, and then it cuts, so oh, it just it? still leaves you feeling unnerved. It was like, what did he look like? It? Yeah. Um, and then we had that sort of, and it was near the beginning, wasn't it? The the moment where the girl comes out of the shutter, the wooden shutter yeah. house, and she sees him around the back of the house. That scene, yeah. Yeah. It cuts from his yeah, face, yeah. And it's our main character when she's much younger. We discover sort of flashback, and he calls her from back behind the house. I thought the way they introduced him on that one shot. I said, I said as we came out to your boyfriend, I said that shouldn't have necessarily worked, just simply yeah. concealing the horror, if you like, of Nick Cage or the creepiness by simply framing it so that he was like that. From the nose just down. his mouth. Yeah. But it was so effective. Yeah, it was. So you just saw his... His mouth was weird as well. His mouth was weird. I mean, I his stopped... voice is so creepy. How would you count it? It's like, hey, first hey. Yeah, his voice wasn't Nick Cage's voice. Not at all. No, it was really weird. It was a high-pitched, creepy kind of... Female voice. Female voice, inclined towards singing. 
and I felt he kind of looked like a couple of kind of rock stars I was thinking about. I mean, T-Rex, maybe? Maybe T-Rex, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so the film sort of breaks down into three sections, doesn't it? Part one, yeah, part two, part three. Part. Yes. It's kind as of... soon as it said that like, part one, I was like, oh God, because those types of films, it's like... Uh, you know you're not safe until you've reached like at least part three or part four. Yes. And what I like about that as a device as well is you know that if the villain or the monster or the thing that you like watching say Nick Cage dies, you know that there's the possibility you're going to see him again because we're jumping around time. Yeah. Still so, another part. Yeah, exactly. So it's very much a film that jumps around time. It quite quickly sets itself up as a serial killer film. Um, and it, it also kind of quite quickly sort of establishes... Like a detective film. I felt yeah. like it was more an FBI like... Yes. Detective yeah, film. apart well, from that first moment where you've sort of seen the girl kind of taken, sort of go around the back of the house and you've seen him, that was the, you know, what you are feeling though, nothing, there's nothing supernatural or no. horror -y. No, not for no. the fact. It's no. real space, real. So yeah, now, let's talk about that first scene where she is with the FBI, her colleague. I they see. turn up into the neighbourhood, they get out of the oh, car. Him? Oh, yeah, no, he doesn't last long. No, but what I liked about that scene was it established really early on. So you're kind of making a connection between her and the child anyway, yeah. because you? you've been shown two scenes. But you quite quickly establishes that she might be psychic. Yeah, yeah. Because she has a hunch that a killer, or the killer, Ray Killer, is in that house. Yeah, yeah. And that scene, the way it played out, I, I thought, thought it was, was a really well done scene. Well, let's that. go further, she is psychic in fact. Yeah, well, yeah. yes, but they have that interesting point further down the way where they say eight, uh, you know, eight times you were right, eight times you were wrong. Uh, yeah. So it's not, she's not reliably, times, yeah, yeah, she's not reliably yeah. psychic, which yeah. I liked, because I thought that scene was incredibly powerful. It was. It was in the yeah. neighborhood, she has a hunch, because when you're a viewer, you're thinking, hang on a minute, is this woman going to ask me to trust just her hunch yeah. all the way through it? Because I don't know if I can get on board with that. Yeah. And then we crept up to the door and you crept around the house and then the most dramatic, probably the biggest jump scare happens, doesn't it? Yeah, it was absolutely really out of yeah, yeah, wasn't expecting yeah. it. Whatsoever. And then she enters the house because her colleague has been shot and we enter that house and I thought that was a brilliantly executed steady cam scene of her yeah, trying. Yeah, and everything. Really yeah. Cool. So what were you feeling like at this point? Sheets. Run away, I was feeling. It's a very odd film to describe because he's essentially a killer. He's the villain, mm. Long Legs, Nick Cage. Mm -hmm. um, and yet he's killing through... The, he doesn't actually, he kill, doesn't anyone actually kill anyone. He doesn't actually He's essentially sort of kind of groomed it's like, someone else. It's basically else. families. It's always families that are dying yeah. with daughters yeah. that are born on the 14th of any month, wow. basically. He lost, me, month. He he lost me completely over the dates, over because it was sort of a bit mathematical, all of that. 14, well, no, but 14, what I liked about all that was it's that idea that most serial killers leave patterns. They yeah, leave, no, no, they, yeah. Know, yeah. And, and so the pattern, I like the fact that the pattern yeah, was the quite complex. Yeah, the pattern was at 14th. Do young girls basically born on the 14th. Yeah. But then, um, yeah, it was always families. It was always the dad that did mm. the killings. Yeah. yeah, the father of these families, and they all seemed to be families that were quite happy or like, mm. you know, you know, like perfect families. Yeah. And Long Legs never killed any of them, but there was always a letter left and signed mm. by him at the scene. So mm. it's basically them trying to figure out what his involvement with it is. I mean, there's lots of procedural stuff. You're having to decode code. You're having to work out patterns. I was getting very True Detective vibes because the first series of True Detective is quite grisly and satanic and pivots around all sorts of kind of strange sacrificial deaths yeah. and victims. Um, you know, it's hard not to go into a film like this knowing that it's a serial killing type thing and you're not bringing into it Silence of the Lambs. Uh, you know, the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. You're sort of thinking of all the worst kind of serial yeah. killers that we know and we've watched and we've seen films about. And I thought what was interesting about this film was it's not actually as gory or as, although there are pretty horrendous moments, rotting bodies, bodies found, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it is a 15 certificate. It tries to work on a much more kind of intellectual level, yeah. I think, doesn't it? Yeah, and it, yeah. And it, and it, and it is procedural, but I, okay, I'm going to be honest. I was about 20 minutes into it and I didn't know what it was quite asking me to feel. I yeah. didn't know if it was slightly comedic, because it was, and I thought yeah, the, the black was. guy, the senior FBI guy, or her colleague rather, was very good. Yeah, I but he kept pulling good. us towards a sort of comic place, because his delivery was quite sort yeah. of almost arched. Yeah, I didn't feel that that skewed me from what I was being asked to feel though. No, I felt no, like no. he, like a lot of horror films, just brought an element mm. of lightness to something that the rest of the time is quite heavy and mm. stressful. Yeah. Like I just saw him as, I feel like most horror films you have a character that's yeah. like the breather moment that you feel relatively safe yeah, with. True. And that's kind of what he did for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, he didn't, I didn't feel that skewed in terms of what I was being asked to feel. I was confused at points about what it was that the film was doing. Yeah. Yes, I agree. A lot of it felt like it was more detective film, then it was a serial killer film, then it was just not really a serial killer Good film, film at whatsoever. All. Um, and I 
kind of wished at times that they just like dedicated the film to one of those things rather than encompassing all yes, three. Yes, I think I agree. I think they think they I tried agree. to busy themselves too much. At one I think point with stuff. quite early on, I thought what was quite striking was Micah Monroe's performance is incredibly, uh, I think, very powerful and very Measured. different as well to any kind of. She's quite, she's quite dislocated. She's yeah. sort of almost not present. That's it's yeah, quite difficult to have as a main character, her type of character, to have yes. as a main character because she didn't. She didn't engage with anyone or anything. No. She's almost. I think that's stunned. also why we needed his the colleague mm. because yeah. he mm. gave us that like. Mm. But it's, it's clearly presented marriage. that she feels awkward in every situation, right down to yeah, when she goes odd. to her boss's kind of home and yeah. she doesn't want to sit with a child and she feels awkward around kind yeah, of any kind of... That was a good scene, wasn't it, with the child? Yeah. yeah. I pretty much straight away, though, read her weirdness as, like, trauma-based stuff. Right. Yeah. So right. she seems somebody that's, like, been through something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, and, and, and as we discover across the film, we discover, not surprisingly, she has an incredibly odd relationship with her mum. Yeah. Uh, she's, yeah, pretty much straight away with the phone calls. I yeah, think. the phone yeah. calls. It's a very weird relationship. Yeah, you're aware there's a strange kind of codependence and a kind of weird kind of connection, interconnectedness between the two of them. I've, I've got, I must have, I realised, after watching this film, during watching it, I must have a very, very sort of naive notion of what prosthetics are. Because when I think of prosthetics, I think of big noses and big eyebrows mm. and whatever. It never occurs to me that they might flatten everything or, right. or completely, change, completely the change the nature of the skin. Because they went to great lengths to try and do facial reconfiguration that was in keeping with the era. For oh, whoever right. at the time in the 70s, 80s, whenever it was set, they were trying to go for what would reconstructive surgery or plastic surgery have ended up looking like on a face. Really? And if you think about it, I came out of this film very much feeling they were riffing, and I still genuinely do. I'm not saying consciously, yeah. but I think Nick Cage is an old character. He has a connection also with Michael Jackson through certain things. Um, I think uh, they were riffing Michael Jackson. It, I felt it in the face. I felt, it, And I think the reason we felt it in the face was this was plastic surgery of a very different time to now. Yeah. This isn't about fillers and do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it felt, I, I thought it was really believable. Because of course what we discover is that the weird guy, Nick Cage Long Legs, is this kind of orchestrator of hell and horror. And a doll maker. And a doll maker. Yeah, a yeah. Doll maker yeah too. no, I, I believed it. It's just that before the film I didn't think it would be like that and then it is. What hooked me in was that first scene where she yeah. she gets a a, a nudge. <laughs> oh, what, from him round the corner. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean that was that so extreme. Legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah his, was his performance was very clowny and oh it's so horrible. Great. No, no, but it was so good. Bloody. Yeah, very yeah. effective. And, and why did she go in? Why didn't she just run off? But anyway, you could say that about the whole film. I love the look of it, that snow, that sort of 90s vibe. Was it 90s, early 90s? 70s, 80s, 70s. yeah. Um, I love all of that. Mm. And um, everything sort of washed out. I really like the really look nice of it. To it yeah. yeah. Um, she, I don't know her as well as you guys do. Um, I thought she was brilliant. She has this sort of thing of, she looks all around very slowly. And then every so often she looks straight at the camera, which is really mm. disorientating. Yeah. I liked her dislocation. No, I, really, I, I mean, I no, actually I thought that the, the extent to which she was kind of almost like you say, Maddie, I like the fact that, I, that you say she was trauma. She clearly looked like the victim of post-traumatic stress. And actually, when you look at her performance, knowing by the end of the film what's happened to her, you actually realise she is. In, this is she's yeah. in total yeah, post-traumatic yeah, yeah. stress, and understandably so. Right down to that wonderful clip Maddie sent me. I think I posted it on the Pop Pop Duckies Instagram where off camera they had a heart rate monitor on her when she for when she yeah, first met her. Yeah, I the scene with him. Yeah. yeah. And so I. And, and her I, heart went from. Her resting heart rate is 76 and it went up to 170. Which is interesting within the film because they didn't really make. Not that you can make much of the fact that she's been held back because she sees him when she sees him. Yeah. She, but that added detail of knowing that they've done that for real mm. so that when she actually sees him in that scene face to face, she, that is the first time she comes across yeah. him on set, in situ on the film um, and that adds I can imagine he's power. very unpredictable to perform with as well so it's probably actually really terrifying. What did you think of his performance as a sort of weird whacked out kind of? No. Well it was, it, I loved it, I loved it. It, it, it was restrained for Nick Cage mm. except for one mad scene where he's in the car. I love that man. I absolutely adored it. Breaks it. into sing song every now and then. I mean it was so sort of like Messy. That was after the moment he'd been to the petrol station place and he'd, yeah. done, he'd done the, what was it? Cuckoo, cuckoo, yeah. cuckoo. And even that scene, I thought directorially, some really interesting decisions made there. So he walks into essentially, I don't think it is a gas station, but it's like a gas station, sort of a shop, hardware mm. store. There's a young girl behind the till. 
And I thought, how are they going to keep the stress here? Are they going to manage it? Because it's the whole thing which Oswald, you know, Ozzy Perkins is going to know about with his dad and Hitchcock. Yeah. Hide the horror. Hide, hide the, the horror. horror. I mean, I was yeah. thinking that all the way through this. How are they going to manage like, they, this? I mean, and they, they hid his face with the whole tra all the trailers. Yes. All the but they hide his, they hide his face even with the angle like of the shots, the fact that you're seeing him in that sort oh, of con head. convex mirror. There's yeah. a kind of security mirror. She's looking at the back. And then even down to him doing something with his hands. Yeah. yeah. It didn't feel like, it didn't feel artificial. It yeah. felt very real. Yeah. It, I felt like I was really getting yeah, on board yeah. with them holding him back the horror the horror yeah. the horror my problem for me was and i really liked how they were holding back and they were you know the horror was being kept to you yeah, know, yeah, saved yeah. i guess for the scene where she is yeah, with him yeah um and i know kiki felt a similar way about this but when it was the scene and we are now looking at his face like properly for ages because mm. it's basically yeah. his last scene in the film yeah um i didn't find it scary anymore yes and i also knew it was nick cage at that point yes and it also looked like nick cage wearing prosthetics in that scene for me mm. um and i think just because it had been so rich with keeping him so held back yeah mm. for not even just the film like this whole lead up to mm. this film to keep mm. him that held back yes um and then to have him that in your face for that long i just felt like they could have the whole way through kept him a bit more held back i think, I think we ever right. needed to fully see his face that much and i had the same problem with it's quite a short scene but the scene when he's just like standing at the bus stop with his bags when the police officers oh, yeah. come and collect him yeah. i just found it a shame when we would get to see his like clean full clean face and full mm. daylight i just felt like mm. the film would have freaked me out more and i felt like it would have been more impactful if from beginning to end he was always slightly so we never fully knew what his whole face looked like i think you're i think you've really hit a really important nail on the head because i think interestingly that bus shot when he was stopped yeah. on the street and he gets caught it was such a mood killer yeah it was such a moment where you felt i felt a deflation of tension suspense unknowability yeah. because i thought the, the most powerful scene with him in the entire film, apart from that opening shot, where you just see his jaw, mm. he's sort of singing, and then we have a cut back to that, we have a reprise of that, yeah. where he sings a song, really and he does an awkward dance. Yeah. That was sensate, again, less is more, less is more. Was the moment in the gas station, it was because yeah, you're thinking, how is he interacting with He's going to kill her. Is yeah, he going to get and I yeah. thought, like, Not knowing what the fuck's no, going on here. Do. And I think the car scene, when he's having and that, that really great, that, yeah. I think that was the perfect amount of seeing his face. And I think that's yeah. as much as it should have been yes. kept yeah. seeing him. You know what I was reminded of they could have done? And there was a similar amount of prosthetics. Do you remember, it wasn't in the film in the end, so I don't know if you've seen it. But when they released the footage of Barry Keown as the Joker in Batman, yeah. Yeah. the new Batman film, Check it out. We did do a reaction to it. Six minutes, I think, cut footage. Yeah, it's all shot through the lens of yeah, the kind like of it's grain. never fully made out. And you never fully. And see I feel it. like there could have been really cool ways that they'd gone about yeah, doing that whole scene where he's talking to her, and it would have still kept that. You know, it still would have been. It would have been scarier had they not been just on his entire face the whole time. I felt for me. Okay, well that's interesting. That's a moment where the film wasn't wasn't affecting me as much. I feel like we're all coming out of the closet a bit on this now because that was your. I had a major major problem with the whole doll thing. With the doll, doll, the doll, the doll thing. Oh uh, yeah, no, I, I thought that was the weakest. And it, it wasn't even necessarily the dolls. I thought the first doll was yeah, excellent. Yeah, the first doll was good because it you, was yeah messed messed up. Messed up when it had real hair, and you were like, is this a kind of? And also, the thing about a doll in that first instance was, is this a replacement for a child? Yeah, I thought I, I mean, kid. I, I couldn't get on board with the whole. These families would have accepted a gift of a doll no, from a church. It, Why? Yeah, it didn't. It was so asking much. me to believe something that was a bit untenable. Yeah. Yeah. Especially that, when the rest of it had been so. Yes. The problem was is that like yeah. When you have a film where it, it did it so realistic at the start and it felt like so strongly one thing, which was like a serial killer yeah. movie and FBI, to then go to something so extreme when you've already done, asked so much of us, yes. you yeah. know, in that sense, then yeah. it made it even more unbelievable because it's yeah. like, I've just been watching a lot of believable stuff. Why is this now really yes. unbelievable? What did you think of, just going back, because I know you haven't commented on it, but what do you think of what we're saying about the seeing... Si no, no, no the, yeah, the bus stop yeah, and the seeing, seeing him and all that. I, I didn't mind seeing him in full yeah. daylight. I mean, right. it's all, and, I, and in fact, it sort of engendered in me this thing of... I, I now realise, despite the prosthetics and what prosthetics are, it is Nick Cage, and I was waiting for him to do something, which he did in the end. In the, I mean, I, in the I was all sorts of waiting for him to be crazy. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. didn't mind sort of having a complete view of him. I was sort of a bit fascinated by it, actually, but whether I was fascinated by the fact that Nick Cage was in there, mm. or... Where was the creepiness coming from for you? Um, Not just the prosthetic. I mean, where mm. was the creep... What was creeping you? Because you said... You said this that's the scariest film i've seen what was scary because it becomes it's essentially all then threads through a satanic he's a head of a satanic cult and... well you've said you've always found like religious satanic stuff mm. quite scary because you had a catholic heart, yeah you? yeah uh, yeah i mean it can really get me it wasn't that in this 
I, for me, lost it with the dolls, mm. the same yeah, the dolls. as you. Mm. I mean, he, just for a start, he wouldn't have been a doll maker. He simply wouldn't. That was ridiculous. But although, I think I said to you before we came in here, the dolls, the doll thing was lost me. Yeah, but I, I just love, believe the family. I like the round. I like the round brain. Yeah, she thing. liked the weird metal. That, green that things, annoyed me even more than the dolls. Oh, did it? It didn't annoy me that bit. I mean, I thought there was something interesting in it. But what would we be meant to believe from that? That he'd invested it with evil? Yeah, no, yeah. I wasn't sure. I mean, I don't mind not knowing things because I often don't know things. No, 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 no. just black magic in it. Like there wasn't yeah. an actual physical thing in it, basically. Well, I don't. That's really why when that. the head gets shot, like black powder. Comes yeah, black powder comes out, and I, like, I thought there was a wonderful moment. I like the effect of when she had almost a sort of. Uh, what's the word when you get um, collateral damage? You had a collateral sort of, you know, when he, she, the yeah. mother or she shoots, shoots the doll. The doll. Then you the see back some of dust coming yeah. out the back of Mike and Monroe's head. Yeah, that's cool. yeah. And I thought, oh, the suggestion here is she's a doll. How much of a doll is she? Does she relate um, to the doll? Is her personality a doll? No, I just knew that the, 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 the brain and the doll is like connected to yeah. the real brain of the whoever the child it's based off of is. But yeah, I just found it. it it just started off so promising. That's why it was just like many yeah. horror films. It was disappointing when it then decided to go a completely different way. And I'm never, I'm genuinely, I'm never convinced, convinced by the supernatural satanic stuff yeah. unless it's done insanely well. And I don't think it was done insanely well, if mm. I'm honest here. I found it disappointing that he just wasn't a serial killer that was killing families. That would have just freaked me out more if he, if they just kept it a bit more simple and he just simply was yeah, a weird actually. doll maker that made dolls for little girls and then he uh, yes. fucking killed the family. But rather than investing the dolls, with, I thought the dolls were too modern. And then I think modern, the whole bit, so we have like the work. hoofed one, the goat man, and then we have the like Satan's eyes and the yes. dolls with the black yes. curtain over their heads. Yeah. Like none it, of that it, did it for me. No, normally it lost me at that point. And yeah. even down to the final scene at the end where there was the twist around where her boss, the, the guy who she's been around and she didn't really want to sit on the bed with his daughter, he's clearly now got her mum there selling him or giving him a doll and saying, oh, well, you know, and so the whole thing's playing out with her boss. He turned evil. I just felt it was all a bit too obvious and it was all a bit too... It was weirdly, it was weirdly simplistic and not thought through in a way that everything else in the film had been quite yeah, well like thought through. Yeah, like the ending was such a throwaway that she just left with the daughter and just yeah. killed the mum and the dad. And because everything was, they've gone to such a well-crafted, you know, through such yeah, a well-crafted maybe. campaign, well-crafted build-up. I thought the music was good. I thought the cinematography was yeah, good. I thought the build-up of scenes was nice. I like the balance between procedural and yeah, flipping I into I horror. I mean, but you made the point and Kiki made the point as we came out. The, the problem here is, is he doesn't kill anyone. Yeah. And it's a problem. Because yeah. even though he's killing by stealth and by proxy, well, so really. I was confused because when all the reviews were coming out, like social media was going crazy over it, like people were saying, you know, don't get your hopes up too much in the sense that it's not like a people saying it's not like a classic horror mm. film where it's just the jump scares and cheap horror tropes and like it's very much more of like a serial killer like type movie. So I was definitely going in like expecting all the horror to be placed within mm. um, Nick Cage's character, yeah. which I just think would have done the film so much more justice. I agree, I agree. Um, that's why he was like really, really not expecting any like random satanic stuff at the end. I also just saw mm. the CGI surrounding it all was weak. I thought he was weird enough though to carry that. No, what, Nick Cage? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think he was. I think that's why they could have just given all of that to him. I don't oh, think I they see, needed I to, see, yeah. I don't mm. think they needed to get rid of him early and then make up for it with all this no, like, cheap horror stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, just, why wouldn't you just keep him there? I literally And then Kiki understand. struggled with it a bit, she said, because she was like, she found him eerie at points to get me yeah. one, like she, you know, she couldn't watch yeah, yeah, the yeah. scenes that he was in. But then it got to a point, and uh, again, it was the scene where we could fully see his face for like a good, what, like mm. straight, it was quite yeah, a long a scene. Yeah. Um, she was like, I just know it's Nick Cage and that's just funny. Yes. Like, yeah. I just find it funny now. Yes. We all know Nick Cage so well, we watch all his yeah. like yeah. stupid films. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it was just Nick Cage with prosthetics on by that point, and I just feel like, now I've slept on it, I'm like just frustrated now that it didn't just keep it a little Do bit more, more simple. Yeah. and. Do, do a little bit less. I mean, I was reminded. Yeah, I was reminded. I mean, I'm only saying it. I'm not saying it just because uh, 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 Nick Cage was in it. But Mandy, I, I'm a big fan of films that don't make sense. If you think of that yeah, weird, that weird scene where the that guy, the English actor, has got his penis out, and it's all getting a bit dodgy. And Mandy, none of it makes clear sense. Neither does Colour Out of Space. No, no, no. But, but impressionistically, you go with where it's taking you, and a sort of you trust it to take you on this yeah, journey. Yeah, tried to make this, too much sense. Out. Yeah, and I have to say, for me, the fundamental problem was Nick Cage not actually being a killer. Nick. Cage Cage was weird and unsettling, but only so far insofar as I found Michael Jackson unsettling. Um, the dolls and the and the orb brain scenario, I didn't buy. The mum working as his proxy, I didn't couldn't get on board with that either. So he had a very promising beginning, very strong performance at the centre, some brilliantly stressful scenes for sure. 
They're not half as stressful as I thought it was going to be. It didn't no, deliver on, on... The mother... I'm saying that it was only the dolls that bothered me. The mother bothered me too yeah, because um, she's quite weak. Very weak. And it's a trope. That is mm. a trope. It's in Carrie, the mother who's... Sort it was of very Carrie, wasn't very it? Very Carrie. Yeah, yeah. didn't need Telling them all. Them to pray, pray, pray. And Kiki hated like that he had an accomplice and that yeah. it wasn't just yeah. him doing it all. Yeah, I thought... I thought I suppose taking your point, I thought they would have done more with her yeah. than that. Because it did just get to a point by the end, I was like, so what are we supposed to be scared yes. of Nick Cage's character for? Just because he looked kind of weird? Because other than that, he didn't really do anything. No. He no, made no, dolls for no, Satan true. and that's, that's it. That's true. Yeah. And, it, and if we're only scared, if we're scared of him, should we just be scared of the nun mum who's doing all the work? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah like I thought there would be lots. Of, I'll tell you what I thought was going to happen in the final scene. Yeah. I thought the accomplice thing would have really sort of like you know hit the back of the net. No, no pun intended. Um, if she, I thought she was going to end, have ended up being the accomplice. She had been doing it all along. That it wasn't her mum. That, that she was framing. That she Make was it. framing her mum. And that in fact that she was part, she was the accomplice kind of conducting the whole thing. Part of me slightly is concerned that maybe that is what the point of the film was because that moment where the kind of stuff yeah. comes out of the back of, back of her head, given her dislocation and emotional emotional kind of removed yeah, from absolutely bad. everyone, I sort of part of me thinks, oh, did I miss a trick there or something? Because it seems so utterly not the right way to end it. Yeah. yeah okay. So should we summarise, Mum? Why don't you go for it? Okay. And also just to add in that final the final Nick Cage scene. I kept thinking, please don't die by banging your head on the table because yeah. everybody's doing that. We're saying, why has that happened in so this, many yes. films? Oh, like, so many smashes that have Hereditary, Alex Wolf did it in that, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, talk to me. Yeah, talk to me. Oh, yeah. God, a fucking call. Yeah, talk to me no, it's, it. it's yeah. literally almost in everything. And they yes. went and did it. Yes. Um, no, I mean, having said that, I seem to have pulled holes in it a bit, but I did. You enjoyed it. You came out saying that's I one did. of the scariest films I I've came seen out in my life. Enjoying it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this is fine to reflect on it. Yeah, no, I think it's on reflection that I can see holes in it. Some stuff didn't bother me. It bothered you, yeah, you know, like the, the day it seems full. Face. Yeah, so, no, that didn't at all. If anything, it sort of added to it a bit. Yeah, but only in a very sort of weird mm. way. And that's thinking, oh, it's pathetic. <laughs> Where's his nose? Yeah. Um, uh, the supernatural element. I never mind that if it's well done, but it sort of wasn't well done, and mm. it was also complicated yeah, yeah it was I mean, too much the revelation much. bit and, and I'm you're right really, it was really convoluted it was really convoluted yeah you're right you're right i love the scene in the bookstore there's always a bookstore no it, it was just as creepy as fuck it was sort of sight the silence and, and as much as anything it was the landscape i think yeah i hate that sort, sort of um coming out of one door and going around the back and it just looks like every sort of farmstead in america in a certain mm. area mm. um that would vote for Trump, actually. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't disappoint me. Right. Okay. Yeah. It didn't good. disappoint cool. me. Seventy-six. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Seventy-six. Um, so obviously, I was like really excited coming up to this just because I've been following almost every little thing that's oh, been wow. out about it. So yeah, I might have gone in with too high hopes, mm -hmm. um, which I'll admit to. But <laughs> even with that being said, like when it was good, it was really good, and I was stressed enough in it. Um, the jump scares got me. I found him very creepy, um, and I thought he was, you know, brilliant. I loved his unpredictability mm. and all of that. I thought she was brilliant, even though I think it was a very hard character to play and a very mm. risky mm. main character to have. I just wish that the film had had, I guess, confidence to do a bit less than what it did. I just felt like it did far too much. As the film kept going on, the weaker and weaker it got for me, basically. Um, oh, okay. And I think. It was just a shame that it got that week when when it was good it was so good like it was so mm. promising when it was mm. going in the right direction so it just made it even more disappointing for me when it then went down just the cheap horror trope route basically yeah. but i still think it was a very like again original uh, apart from like the satanic stuff at the end a fairly original like concept Script, i just yeah. wish that he had been the horror aspect of it i just mm. wish he'd maybe yeah, yeah. been the serial killer mm. uh or had done something that required us to be scared from other than his face yeah i wish that we hadn't seen as much of his face as we did yeah. i'd also like to see it again because i want to know what i think Missed. of it on a second watch after yeah. knowing what i know seeing if there's anything that i missed it was still an entertaining film it still mm. got a reaction out of me it still made me feel a certain type mm. of way i felt unsettled still when i came out of it at the end yeah. yeah um because of his performance though not because of any of the satanic stuff at the end yeah, yeah. i almost kind of like emotionally tapped out by the, towards yeah. the end of the film if i'm completely honest but i'd still rate it relatively high i think i'd give it like a 70 out of 100 oh, okay. because i think when it was good it was so good it and was, i just wish it? that the rest of the film had been on that level yeah that's my 
Yeah. Okay, so what did you say? 76? 76. I think this film, it's weird. Like you say, when it was great, I thought it was really great. I thought its build-up was brilliant. The, uh, the analogy I'd use, I, I felt like I went in with a sort of bucket full of stress and intrigue and horror and it felt like the film held that stress perfectly to begin with and then as the film went along i think the way you summed up beautifully it just got less and less stressful weirdly even though the kind of jump scares would come and there were tense scenes and you know it kept for me making what it thought were clever choices that ended up only to diminish the drama and the horror and i think this film could have been served really well by being, far, I think as you've, you've kind of said, Maddie, being far more straightforward in its approach. I think it tried to be too many things. It Less tried to intercept all. too mm. many concepts of, you know, like you say, the carry, the satanic, the serial killer. Is he a serial killer? Is he not? But if, in fact, and even when he goes weird, his weird moments, we've seen them all so many times before. Not dressed uh, up in a not wig. Not dressed up in a wig, <laughs> no. And, and when it was weird, it was particularly weird, but that was when he was absolutely, literally framed yeah, out of shot. Yeah. Yeah. You've got no sense of him. And you're right, I think the big problem with this, as, with, as, is, as is the problem with many horrors or thrillers, you reveal the you reveal the subject and there's a huge loss of i also think though i liked her performance i think there is a huge gamble at work if you have a performance where the lead character is as disengaged as she yeah. is because actually then by the end i wasn't really even caring for because i didn't feel she cared for her mum. i didn't feel she cared for anyone really a she seemed anyone, a colleague yeah. so i wasn't there wasn't even that human emotional no, aspect yeah, to yeah. her risk and vulnerability and the children were kind of almost mesmerized and yeah. there's a lot of hypnosis it felt like everyone was hypnotized um mm. and so yeah i wasn't as creeped out as i was expected to be so for me the creep factor which i came to this for didn't really come for the horror but i came for yeah. to be creeped out yeah. just got less and less and less yeah. and less and then right at the end when he almost gives a wink to camera yeah it was kind of saying cult see you at the mm. prince Charles cinema and i was just like oh it's a little bit yeah. obvious yeah. so i would be a bit harsher than both of you i'd give this 65. Okay, oh. still more than yeah. halfway. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, I'm surprised it's getting 100 out of 100 yeah. almost everywhere. I'm surprised, everywhere. It, got, I'm surprised yeah. it got that much. From there. I mean, in terms of her performance as well, I actually went through my mind what you said you thought was possible, that she was the person. I mean, I, she, I mean yeah. the fact that she was so dislocated, I thought there's no reason for this amount no. of dislocation. She's going to be the other person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when it turned out to be the mother, I thought that was yeah. really weak. Yeah. Just, yeah, very, a lot of weak stuff. Yeah, but, but great moments of abstraction. So when yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, I tell you also something else. I, I was about to say, great moments. I love like red screen. Oh, <laughs> I do. Yeah. I love, I love that. Oh, yeah, that aesthetic. But a little bit of a concern went in when I got a little bit of ick when I saw snakes. I was like, oh, what yeah, was, all yeah, those yeah, random cut things. I don't, a cut away of snakes isn't going to do it. Red much. snakes. No. Like all red snakes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There were just little moments things. where you just thought, mm. well, like random did... bits of a nun and you'd be like, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> and they yeah. went with the, the odd moments of snakes right from early on in the film. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I've decided what I want is a montage of every car scene with Nick Cage. The moment he takes acid with Pedro Pascal, the moment in Mandy where he screams at the camera, and the moment in this. I just, every time he's in a car, he's fantastic. Yeah. He is, yeah. Anyway, is. tell us what you think.